how's life? How's it? How's it going? Now I sense a disturbance in the force. <laughs> well, that is an understatement. Hi, folks. It's your old pal, Mushmouth Joe. I just watched Tim Pool's debate with Jink Uger, and holy shit, that guy is out of his fucking mind. And now he's running for Sith Lord of the United States. Wait, sorry. Uh, I mean, President of the United States. Well, let's 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 talk about you running for president. The Sith Lord. I knew it. See, he even admitted it. Can you be president? Uh, the yeah. argument being that you were not born in the United States. Uh, you, your parents were not American citizens when you were born. So, first of all, uh, I'm mainly in the race to make sure that Biden drops out. Hey, fuck you, buddy. Uh, I'm not a native-born uh, citizen. I'm a naturalized citizen. Okay. The natural-born citizen thing was amended out by the Fourteenth Amendment. So, the Fourteenth Amendment says very, very clearly, anyone who is born or naturalized has due process and equal protection of the laws. So the Supreme Court has uh, ruled that due process and equal protection means you have the same exact rights, and they didn't put naturalized in there by accident. They put it in on purpose. That very clearly amends the earlier part of the Constitution where naturalized citizens did not have equal rights. Now we do have equal rights. Okay, so Skank seems to think everyone has a right to run for president. He's not correct. The presidency is something you have to qualify for, kind of like joining the military or getting a driver's license. Like, oh, of course! Later on, Shemp made this outrageous claim. So if, you, if you're in the middle of Alabama and you put up a Trump sucks sign, you are going to have massive problems. You will not get someone coming to your house and threatening to kill you. You're like you nuts. Do when... Yes, you will. There's huge parts of this country that if you say Trump sucks, they will physically assault you. I mean, look, I was, forget the middle of the country. I was, when I ran for Congress, we did a panel uh, up in uh, Palmdale, which is in, you know, outer parts of LA. Uh, but there's like, like far right militia types up there as well, right? Even though it's mainly democratic. And so some bunch of like uh, massive right wingers came to our panel. And I, I said one thing against Trump and they nearly assaulted me. They're like, how you can't say that about our president, right? Uh, well, then they say, Barack Hussein Obama's a Muslim terrorist. I said, wait a minute. I thought we weren't saying bad things about presidents. Yeah. What happened, right? Why don't we take a peek at what Palmdale, California calls far-right militia types? This clip comes from local news coverage of that incident. He's not the man. You need to learn to like Jesus, not us. Don't teach us. Don't teach us. Don't teach us. An unfortunate sign of the times, a political forum in the Antelope Valley got so heated, deputies had to be called in to shut it down. You are bigots. And by the way, if you vote with them, you're, you're a liar. Bigots. You're a liar. Okay, no, you're a bigot. You're a liar. It started out as an educational candidate forum for the 25th Congressional District, but quickly turned into a shouting match. When they say Muslim ban, I say Trump wife ban. Okay, so I uh, have many immigrant wives. By the way, Melania has broken the law in how she came here. The don't degrade my president or his wife. But the forum got so out of hand, the sheriff's department was called in. They told us that, you know, it's best if we shut down the event because we don't want uh, any violence to take place, which is, we, we agree, we don't want anyone to get hurt. Yes, of course, we wouldn't want this big brown buffalo hurting any of these poor elderly people. I know that if, if I go to a, uh, if, if we have people on the show who rag on Trump, the responses we get are, you are wrong. If we go to places and we challenge the left, we get threats of violence and death. No, not death. Notice how he just dismisses that without even thinking about it. Of violence and death. No, not death. But, uh, but we do. But, but, We've been, we but were swatted, Tim, against it. I was it swatted matter. 15 times last year. We had, we had, oh, you were? We were yeah. swatted 15 times. Yeah, I saw that you were swatted at least once. And I, and I uh, said on air, I Bomb hate threats. that. I despise that. Spies, infiltrators. I mean, the, de the degree of threats that we got were insane. I, I don't really, like the Antifa thing, you guys hyped up so much and then it, they never arrived. This guy covers politics on YouTube every day. Yet he never covers any of the violence we've seen from Antifa or BLM over the past several years. So he doesn't think he has to admit it. But would you vote for a guy this clueless and dishonest? I wouldn't recommend it. The Antifa thing, you guys hyped up so much and then it, they never arrived. What right? do you mean? They did. They like just, there was barely any Antifa. Meanwhile, there's like right-wing militias everywhere. Well, our right -wing... And there's like 
two Antifa dudes in Portland, but wait, 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 but on. there are extreme left, and they are getting more extreme. How many people now? Shank, buddy, you've got to get yourself to an optometrist soon. How many people died in the occupation in uh, uh, in Seattle? I don't know. I think three. I I, I wouldn't doubt. Is, that. It, is it? It's particularly disconcerting when far leftists with rifles take over several city blocks. Yeah, that was a disaster. And they unloaded three hundred rounds into an SUV with two teenagers in it. I don't know if they both died. There were, I think, maybe potentially three deaths sp specifically there. But it's like, hey, that's what we're talking about. That 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 happened, you know. So that definitely happened, and that's what I mean and by the George, now. The George Floyd uh, occupation as well in in Minneapolis. You also had shootings. There's a video of a car driving through, and they're unloading rounds into that car. So so there's there's a difference. There, there's so many nuances here. They always forget about this lump of shit, who does not go by the name of Daryl Brooks. He purposely drove his Ford Escape through a Christmas parade, killing six and injuring well over 70 just because he was angry and a bunch of Christians got in his way. Do you know how many people died in the George Floyd riots? I don't. There's there's different estimates. The original estimates was, was around 34 to 36. I think it's been amended now based on people making arguments about what constitutes a death during the riot versus someone died while the riot was happening. But it's between like 20 and 30. So you, when you have nationwide mass protests over uh, what I would say is arguably serious disinformation coming out of what happened with George Floyd, people fear terrorism. It's not disinformation, brother. I mean, well, we all well, saw it. His mind is completely closed off, but his mouth is constantly open. Well, no, no, you need, we need to clarify what I mean by disinformation. Okay, I'm, I'm not yeah. saying, so obviously the dude, uh, Chauvin, put his knee on the guy's neck and the, this, this general area is like covering a large portion of his back. Um, but the disinformation comes around the circumstances that resulted in that the moral questions of what should be done, how it should be done, and the fact that what did happen doesn't warrant 30 plus more deaths and mass rioting across the country, which destroys more lives and burns down innocent people's buildings and homes. So look, first of all, uh, Chauvin killed George Floyd. He did it in a brutal way. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about that at all. Have you read all. the coroner's report? Yeah. And you know what, what happens to him is that sometimes people die because they can't breathe because you cut off the flow of oxygen and sometimes they die and they say they can't breathe it's because they have a heart condition or right. some other condition and when you press down long compress long enough they they literally have the feeling that they can't breathe and then they die are you familiar with the circumstances before george floyd's death like what led to him being apprehended in the first place i think he had like a fake 20 dollar bill for which he was apparently that then you you shouldn't murder people over but he $20. was behind the wheel of a car chewing on a speed ball which which is methamphetamine and fentanyl okay but tim what effing difference does it make the question okay. is should the should the police and i'm not i'm not telling you what you should believe i'm asking you genuinely should the police remove a driver from a vehicle who's behind the wheel who is chewing on a speed ball yeah, the police have to use force to some degree. I get it. You can tell he doesn't like talking about these cases with Tim. Probably because Shank has been telling lies about them to his audience for years. Did you watch the full body camera footage from start to finish of, of how it all went down? I believe I did in that case. That's definitely a no. It's a moral dilemma. And I think... It's not at all a moral dilemma. It's oh, not. it absolutely is. So Tim, you could drag him out of the car... You can't sit on his neck for nine minutes, brother. That's obvious. I agree. I completely Don't agree. fight that. I'm that not, is terrible. I'm not, it's I'm, murder. I'm not saying that specific incident is the moral dilemma. I'm saying the entirety of the circumstance brings us to a bunch of serious questions that must be answered that have not been. No, I think it's... it's. Uh, look, I'll tell you, Tim, to the average guy, it sounds like you're excusing it. I know you're saying you're not because you're putting in the caveat that the nine minutes was wrong and it was murder, but like, don't get into it because... If you want to talk about nuance, there's a thousand cop videos where they drag him out of the car and mm -hmm. you could say, oh, no, that's totally okay. That guy's on speed. If you're, he if, was speed, like he was causing a, a significant issue where people might've gotten hurt and the cops had to subdue him. So this make is, the argument in that case. If you make it about George Floyd, everybody's going to think you're de you know, defending this racist guy who murdered that guy. Wow. So Kang only forms opinions based on how he will be judged rather than on facts. Is this the reason so many people are confused these days? If you base all your opinions on emotional bullshit, you're going to have a bad time, man. Because if you form your opinions based on what others will think of you, you're allowing others to shame you into thinking whatever they want you to. So if you ask me, that's where this entire debate began to fall apart for poor old Crank. I, I don't care what people think about me if I'm trying to find a solution so this doesn't happen again. And so if the issue is, guy behind, uh, guy uses counterfeit $20 bill resulting in a police call. Mm -hmm. Police find him behind the wheel of an SUV chewing on hard drugs. He's removed from the vehicle. He sat down. Eventually, they move to arrest him. 
George Floyd becomes combative, says, take me out of the car, take me out of the car, I can't breathe, put me on the ground, put me on the ground, put me on the ground. Chauvin arrives after this, kneels on his neck. Those are the circumstances of what happened. Crowd forms, they're mad at it. George Floyd dies. Nine minutes. The questions are, where where was the point at which this this should have stopped? Uh, should it have just... It, it, Why it, is that not super easy? The point it should have stopped is he should never put his a knee on the guy's neck. They have training for it. And so then... Well, that's the training is wrong. Exactly. And then the and, question, the answer becomes, we, we dissect this. We say, okay, here's the point of failure. And so when you, uh, uh, the problem is when you outright dismiss it and say you're racist, if you question it, you're siding with the racist guy. If people want to say that, that's fine. I don't care. It doesn't solve the problem. But Tim, you're purposely picking the worst case to talk about. See, he doesn't even care about solving the problem. He just wants to shame you for using logic. What a dick. You know that it's going to get more attention if you say it in the context of George Floyd. Let's talk about Ahmed Arbery. Okay. I mean, these are the high profile stories. That Ahmed Arbery, the guy who got shot uh, j jogging in the neighborhood? Is I, I think jogging is a, is a representation of your misinformation or your, your, your ignorance uh. of the issue. Tim, are see, you gonna, this are is you gonna why people think you're a radical right winger, That's man. That's fine, but if you don't know, why would you make the argument? You see, he has proven throughout this debate that he willfully makes harsh judgments without knowing all the details and doesn't give a damn, not to mention that he's a liar and smells like dirty socks and vinegar. So what do you mean I don't know? I know the case. The guy, they, the two redneck racist sons of bitches who murdered him said that he was in uh, the the house that was being built, which, by the way, apparently tons of people had come by to see, hey, how's the construction going, right? right? So do they know that he was one of the, how's the construction going? Well, they don't know you, anything because he wrong. didn't steal anything. But okay? you're, you're wrong. So, but they see a black guy at a construction but, but site, Jake, you're and wrong. they're like, let's chase that son of a bitch down and shoot him. I don't care what people think of me if I'm following the facts to try and figure out what happened and try and solve the problem, but you have already shown you don't know the case. Yeah, yeah, that's total horse crap. Go ahead, defend the racist guys who murdered him. Go what ahead. is this, kindergarten or something? Yeah, yeah, that's total horse crap. Go ahead, defend the racist guys who murdered him. Go well, ahead. How about I just describe what happened? Okay, yeah, go ahead. So a few weeks before the incident, a gun is stolen. Poli so, but not by that guy, but hey, the racist thought it must how be the about, black guy. How about the police then show a picture of him to various people in the neighborhood saying, this is our suspect of the burglaries that have been happening over the past several weeks. Except it wasn't, right? No, I, I, Ahmed Arbery didn't Ahmed do anything Arbery was wrong. the suspect. I have I never saw that, and that's that's my point. You okay, didn't. Okay, so I don't a I don't believe you. B you I never to. saw it. Uh, C uh, there's. Uh, but you see the problem? Of, no, no. They the didn't follow the case. Okay, I'm okay. not making a moral. So wait, 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 wait Tim. So let's say let's take your bullshit facts. This guy really hates facts. Let's accept them as true. Okay. Uh -huh. So they show me a picture. Please come by my house and show me a picture of a black guy. And they say this might be a suspect in a robbery. Yep. If I see him, I'm not going to chase him down with a gun because that means that there's a high chance that we're going to get into a conflict and someone's going to die. Why? That's a lunatic thing to do. Why did the guy and who I, filmed and then go the to jail? second thing I'm not going to do is look at any black guy in the neighborhood and go, "I bet that's him, man. But Let's I, go grab our shotguns." But I but I don't disagree. Okay. Why did the guy who filmed it go to prison? I think that the, what they stated in that case was that he helped to chase the guy down. It wasn't the filming that was the issue. It was that he helped to corner the guy in his car as well, and that's why he was an accomplice. So he didn't coordinate with him anyway. He saw the McMichaels chase after him. And so he said, I got to film this. He then gave the footage out, which showed what happened and resulted in the criminal charges, but they locked him up too. You'd think he'd realize by now that his argument is pathetic garbage, but nope. He just keeps getting louder and more emotional. He should try having some ice cream. It always makes me feel better. Chocolate, chocolate chip. Oh, yeah. But why are you like going out of your way to defend the most racist murderers in America? It, then, then you shouldn't be, wonder why people think you're an extreme right winger, Tim. I'm well, keeping it real with you. I don't know who these guys are. I don't know anything about You don't think that they're racist when they sh just chase down a, a black guy in the neighborhood and pull a shotgun on him? You see, this He's is not even armed, and then they murder him in cold blood, and you don't think that's racist? You see, What is your line for racism, then? I'm not going to start making declarative statements about the personal opinions of people I've never met and don't know anything about. I'm going to try and understand what the argument from the prosecution was. And guess what? The prosecution did not dispute that Ahmed Arbery was a suspect in the felony burglaries. The prosecution argued that I they- I don't care. Well, there you have it. Tim has continued to keep his cool throughout all the childish behavior of this lunatic. 
And now Klang has finally just given up and admitted that he doesn't care. But I think most of us could already tell. I also think he's made it quite clear that his sympathy is only reserved for those who don't have pale skin. And yet he accuses everyone else of being racist. Every time a black man is killed by either authorities or vigilantes, in, like in the Ahmed Arbery case, what uh, right-wingers do is, did you know that back in seventh grade, he was once tardy? And I, we heard that in eighth grade, he was smoking marijuana. He was evil and had it coming. Did but you know George Floyd might have stolen 20 whole dollars? Oh my God, these black people, they're so evil. Did you did you know that Trayvon Martin uh, it was, it was caught not, in school, maybe smoking pot? And that's why... Uh, Zimmerman had to murder him in cold blood. That, he had it coming. He had it coming. Someone has deeply hurt this man. So I can understand if conservatives and right wingers have done that. And so you're just frustrated and don't want to hear it. But I'm not doing that. It's but it's in the Almond Arbery case and the George Floyd case. You're taking the most extreme cases with the most clear racism, with the most clear murders. And you're trying to nuance it. And, and what I'm telling you, Tim, and what has made me uncomfortable in the past about you, which is what I was trying to get past, is that that attracts a huge right-wing audience because they want somebody to excuse the but I don't death care. of Ahmed Arbery and George Floyd. And when you seem to excuse it with your nuance, then they go, yes, I don't care. What finally, they somebody's sticking up for white people killing black people. Come on, don't tell me there aren't people in your audience that think that. There's tons of people who think that. Well, if anyone was thinking that, do you, do you feel that you have sufficiently shamed them yet? It looks a lot like projection from over here. This asshole spoke for over two hours, and I only cherry-picked a few clips, because I feel this series of clips shows who this guy is and why he isn't worth your time. I mean, Come on, man. Oh, come on. But, but, but. This is why you never see him on shows like this one. Because he always comes out looking bad. Every time, man. The only reason he's doing this is because he's selling a new book and he's running for president. And I think we all know why he's running in the first place. I believe that I am going, I, if I were the, rule, uh, the benevolent dictator of the world, I would legalize bestiality where you are giving you are, you are pleasuring the animal. I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thank you. Thanks for watching.